are you, my friends? This is a pre-calculus course, lecture number two, exponential functions. Now, in this uh, lecture, we will define exponential functions and we will graph the functions. First, we see that the exponential function is a function that has the form f of x is equal to a to the power x, where a is called the base. A should be greater than zero, positive, and A cannot be one. X is any real number. The domain of this function is all real numbers. Now what we have seen, we have seen exponents before in the algebra course. X was integer, like two, three, minus one, four, or rational exponent, like one over three, half, etc. Now in this lecture, we will see X is any real number. So that's why we call the domain is all real numbers from minus infinity to plus infinity. Just to stress the idea here that the base A cannot be negative. So A greater than zero from zero until infinity. A cannot be one. If A is one, then the whole function is one. So it is not exponential. So increasing, the function is increasing if, if A, the base is greater than one from one here until infinity. Between zero and one, which is positive, so the function will be decreasing. Just to mention here that pi is an irrational number. We have seen pi 3.1416. And there is another number E here is called an irrational number. 2.7182, that's the number E. Now let's graph the exponential function f of x2 to the power x. If you don't know the graph, you can take some points as I did here, then it will be a basic graph. So this is a new function. We generate some points. Start with this simple point here, zero. If x is zero, two to the power zero is one. See so the point here, zero, one. If x is 1, then y will be here 2. You see the point. If x is 2, it will be 4, etc. If, if x is minus 1, it will be half. See, minus 1 and half. And then this is the graph. It's going up, increasing, because the base here is greater than 1. And then we call the x-axis, which is the y equals 0. We call it horizontal asymptote. The graph here will come down, 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 but it will never cut or touch the x-axis. The domain will be orient numbers and the range open from zero, which means y is positive. Open zero to infinity. Now this is a summary of what I have said. This is in the case a greater than one, so the graph will look like this. You see this one here, the blue graph. So any base greater than one, the graph will look like that domain or real numbers, the range zero to infinity without shifting, we will see some shifting. It's increasing because the base is greater than one. The y-intercept zero one without shifting, then with shifting it will, will be different. It is one to one, so it has an inverse. We have seen the inverse in lecture number one. And then x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. Now, if a is between zero and one, we see the graph will look like this. So we call this decreasing exponential function. This is a decreasing here. Zero to infinity is the range without shifting. It is one to one and x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. Now if we have three functions, two to the power x, five to the power x, eight to the power x, and we need to graph them on the same axis, what will happen? We have seen two to the power x. Let's see the other two. See, two to the power x is an increasing function. The base is greater than one. It will pass through zero and one. Also, five to the power x is increasing. Eight to the power x is increasing. But see the idea here, as, we, as the base gets larger, see five is larger than two. So the graph will be closer to the y and closer here to the x. And also, a to the power x is bigger, the base is bigger, so the graph is coming closer to the y-axis. Let's graph with shifting. If you see any function, exponential function with shifting and reflection maybe, 
So we can start with the basic exponential. The basic can be either increasing, as we mentioned before, or decreasing depending on the base. Then we use the reflection in the x-axis or in the y, as we have seen in the algebra course. Then we use the shifting up, down, right, and left. Let's start with two examples. We'll do many examples in these graphs. f of x will be minus 3 to the power x plus 2. Now be careful here. Minus 3 is not the base. See, I mentioned the base should be positive. So the base only 3. There is a minus outside. I will explain it now in the graph. So we start with the, ba the basic exponential, 3 to the power x. It's an increasing. Then we, we see the reflection. This is a reflection in the minus, and that's a shifting on the left. Now let's look at this nice graph here. See, I start with the dashed graph, 3 to the power x. You see? Plus 3 is the base, greater than 1, increasing. That's the function here, passing through 0 and 1. See, this is dashed. Then you make reflection. See reflection in the, in the x-axis because that minus is minus one times the three. Three is the base, minus one is the reflection becomes here, minus three to the power x. And then this green, you shift it on the left, the whole graph. See, I have, sh I have shown this point here, zero minus one, it will go here. But the whole graph, this is the final graph now, minus three to the power x plus two domain, all real numbers range will be from minus infinity until zero, all negative now. Now the second one, we have five plus half to the power x. Half to the power x, this is the decreasing like this. You see decreasing? See this one here, decreasing. Basic, half to the power x, passing through one. Then we shift up five units. See, this at 1 becomes at 6 here. And the horizontal, see the horizontal was at y equals 0. Now it will be y equals 5. That's the horizontal asymptote. All right, the domain will be already numbers and the range will be from 5 until infinity. Now let's look at very important graphs. The first one is absolute value of the whole function. See, the absolute value of the whole function. Here we have absolute value on the x. Different ways, different methods. Let's start with, this one is easier, the first one. So I will draw. So the idea when you see absolute value on the whole function, draw the function inside first, normal. This is what I explained here. So I would call this function capital M. You see capital M. 2 to the power x minus 1 minus 4. The same function here. See, 2 to the power x minus 1 minus 4. I would call it capital M. You can call it any function you like. So I just draw it normal. I start with 2 to the power x, you see. And then I make the shifting here. One unit to the right. See, it will go there. And then 4 units down. So this is the final graph, the black. See this black here? All right, this is the black here is the capital M of X. That's a function M. Now, what do we need? We need the absolute value of the M, which means we draw the function first, then we move all the negative parts. See the negative part under, we move all the negative part below the X, that part here to above the x, because when you have absolute value of a negative number, it's a positive number. Now, this is the graph here that we did in the previous slide here. This is the same graph, this is capital M, see, capital M. The graph on this on the left here is capital M. So this blue, that means this part is negative, means negative y. When you put absolute value on the whole function, you take that part above the x, which becomes positive. So all this f, the function f is positive. It is above the x or on the x. Because this point three zero stays there, x intercept. 
So this is the final graph now. The graph here, there is a horizontal asymptote at four. And then if we need the domain or real numbers, the range will be closed from zero to infinity and decreasing like this from minus infinity until three. If you need increasing from three open to infinity. Now the second one, a little more difficult. Look here, please. F of X is two minus three to the power minus absolute value of X. Note, if you have absolute value on the X, this is one, one way, easy way, you can take two cases. See, I will start here on the right side. I say if X is positive or zero, if X is negative. See, if X is positive, we know from the algebra course, absolute value of X is X. Just be careful here. So the absolute value of X becomes X. So I put here two minus three to the power minus X. Why I put that? The absolute value of X is equal to X, if X positive. Now just compare here, please. If X is less than zero, that means absolute value of X is minus X. So I put minus X in the absolute value, it becomes here two minus three power X. I would call this R of X red function. I would call this B of X blue function. So let's draw this. See, this is the basic three, you see the three, and then there is a reflection, all right? And now there is another reflection. See, we have two reflections on the X and the Y. Then we have shifting up two units. So the blue, if you go slowly here, this blue is the function B. So we need X great, greater than zero. That means the positive X. So we take this part. You see this part here? See this part here? See, this is the blue. So I take this black the part where x positive. Now here we have two minus three power x. So this is three power x. There is a reflection and then shifting up. That's the red. See the red here is the same as the red here. Red here is the same as this red. The blue is the same as this blue. x negative, I take this negative. See the x negative here, the black. Now on the next slide you will see, this is what I have showed you. And this is the final graph of the function f2 minus three to the power minus absolute value of x. See, this is the graph. It comes here at one, and then it will go here to infinity. So we see the range from one closed to two open. That's the range. It looks difficult. You can just easily study it. Now, if you have A, zero is the X intercept and B, zero B is the Y intercept of this function. Let's find A plus B. So let Y is equal to zero for the X intercept. So you put zero here, minus four, half X minus three. So I take a minus four on the other side, becomes two squared. This is two to the power minus one. So minus X plus three is equal to two because we have the same base. So X will be one and A is one. Y intercept let X is equal to zero. So minus four, half to the power minus three. So this is eight minus four is four. So A plus B will be five. Now here we have the graph is given and we need to find the function. He gave you the function three to the power AX plus B plus C. That's the function of this graph. Let's find A plus B plus C, and this is a multiple choice. So the answer can be seven or minus five or minus two or four or six. So we start studying the graph here. See, there is a horizontal asymptote at minus three. So Y is equal to minus three. C will be minus three, you see there? Now we have here two points clear on the graph, zero six. So I take zero six lies on the graph here, and then the coordinates, X is zero, Y is six, satisfy the equation. So I put six there, see, six in the Y, three, zero in the X, A times zero plus B, minus three is the horizontal. 
So when I make the equation here, take three on the other side, becomes nine. Nine and three squared, three to the power b, so b will be two. I can take the, the other, same thing for this point one zero. Put zero for the y, one for the x, then I will get a minus one. So I have a, b, and c. When I add them, I get minus two. So the answer here is c. Now these are some questions, old exam questions or practice questions. You can try. You graph uh, this function here, exponential. Remember the base here is four and there is a reflection. Find the range where the graph is above the x. Another one, f is exponential function. It has the form f of x is equal a to the power x. I gave you here one point, find f of six. Uh, here we have exponential function three to the power x minus one. Find the value of h. We need h if f of h plus 17, see this is the function. <laughs> so we replace h plus 17 there. Minus eight f of two is equal one over f of zero. Try that, find h. And then here we have m zero is the x-intercept. 0n is the y-intercept of this exponential function. Find the value of m plus n. We did similar. Here may be a little tricky. You have exponential function f of x, 2 over 3 to the power 2 minus 3x minus 2. Try to write this in this form. k a to the power x only plus m. So you have to write this given function in this form. So there is a k number, a is a number, only x should be there, plus m is another number. Then find k, find a, find m. After that we need 8a minus 27k plus m. And the answer will be 32 or 11 or 13 or 20 or 17, multiple choice. Here, given the graph, we did similar in the examples. Find this function, then multiply c times b minus a, multiple choice question. And here we have to graph question number seven, absolute value on the whole function. You see absolute value, we did similar. Remember absolute value of the whole function, easy. You draw the function inside, then you take the absolute value plus two. So you shift up two units after you do the graph. And here we have function g minus three plus 10 to the power minus absolute value of x. Now, as I mentioned in lecture number one, I will put the answers, the final, final answers of all these questions. See, this is number one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, and seven, also the graphs. Now, please, for the complete solution of all these seven questions and their parts, you can see the video on exponential functions, lecture two, pre-calculus, all the exams, questions. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. Just to remind you that this is a pre-calculus course, lecture number two. Thank you again. Bye.